What is up, YouTube? Stocks by the numbers here. Welcome back. Today's Monday, 17th, and we're getting started with a new week here. First things first, I wanted to do a quick update with the last stock that we looked at, which was STEM Inc., ticker symbol STEM, listed here on the New York Stock Exchange. Stock has pulled back uh, when we made the video, I don't know, maybe like 503, 505 a share, I don't recall, but it was about $5. And uh, right now, as we see, uh, the stock has pulled back to uh, $4.64, down $0.05 cents here on the day, uh, about 1% pullback. As we see here again, this is my one-year chart, which I backed out, and you can see that it has broke the bottom trend line and, of course, pulled back right around 460 which is at the bottom trend line, which I did say could definitely happen. We also spoke about the $200 million, where is it, $200 million in a convertible senior notes. Obviously, anytime new offerings are made, uh, investors and traders uh, usually get very upset. They're worried about dilution. So a lot of people begin to short the stock or sell their position. And um, I did say that $800 million market cap at the time at $5, uh, 200 million was roughly 25% of that. Uh, the stock was at around five and a half, if you recall. So I took out the calculator. We did 25% of five and a half because 200 million is 25% of 800 million at the time. And that gave us a dollar 37 half minus that five and a half. And I showed a low of roughly $4 and 12 and a half cents. And if we look here, at the top of our screen again, the O, the H, the L, the C, which stands for the open, the high, the low, the close. As you see, the low was $4.26. So, you know, may have picked the wrong price for my calculation at five and a half. Perhaps I should have went with, you know, 540 or 535, which would have, uh, oh no, excuse me. Uh, perhaps I should have went with a higher price on the day. I think it hit, what, like 570 that day. So if I went with 570, perhaps we would have gotten 426 from our calculation. Uh, however, long story short, uh, I did say that we would see a pullback and, you know, being what, 10, 12 cents off of my prediction. Eh, I've had worse days, right? So if anyone uh, stepped in at five and then you added to your position, you know, uh, in my opinion, I think you're in a, a good spot. And, um, you know, hopefully you were able to add to the position on the pullback. If you saw the video at five and you were patient and you happened to buy some shares down at 430, 440, 450, let us know down in the comments section, right? Because obviously you were, you know, very sharp and you were very on point. You saw the pullback and you knew to pull the trigger. So, uh, you know, in my opinion, getting in at the low fours, as I said in my first video, uh, would be a really great entry here with a situation like this. And again, drop down to 426 and immediately pulled up and is now sitting at that bottom trend line. So it may possibly ride this bottom trend line here and we can pull back again, maybe, you know, sub four and a half here going into earnings because this, in my opinion, is really where the company is going to make a move. Now, chances are they more than likely are going to miss on the EPS side uh, again, coming down here, we've seen they missed uh, three of the last four quarters. However, the last beat on the EPS side was Q1 of 22. Now we're getting Q1 of 23. So there is a de you know a decent possibility that the company can beat on the EPS side. And on the revenue side here, 62 million, we go back the last couple of quarters, 155 million, 99 million, 66 million. And then this time last year, estimates of only 28.922 million, company comes in over $41 million and destroys not only EPS estimates, but of course, revenue estimates. So, you know, in my opinion, it is possible that they beat on the top and bottom lines again. However, I would, you know, be a betting man more that they would beat on the revenue side as opposed to beating on the EPS side. And of course... Uh, when the company came in and did something like that, you had a lot of reaction here in the stock and kind of flattened out here at this point. But again, the company at this time was trading north of $7 a share. So even with them coming in with decent numbers to keep the company flat, you know, in my opinion, understandable, understandable and justified. Uh, because again, I believe at around $5 a share, we were trading at a little over two times total revenue, which is really technically where these companies should be, especially if they're not profitable like STEM yet. And, um, you know, again, over here at, you know, seven and a half, 
we're talking north of a billion dollar market cap for a company bringing in tens of millions of dollars. So understandable as to why it flattened out or potentially pulled back. But to come in again with the beat on the revenue, that that's that's where this pump came from. Because everyone thought that this company was just going to be off to the races. And then, of course, you see here it hits the top trend line, begins to pull back. And then, of course, the wider loss on the EPS side, and they begin to slowly pull it down. Again, we're in our trumpet here, which means we are um, not really convinced whether we have a bullish situation or a bearish situation. But in my opinion, I do think they're going to come in and beat this revenue number. EPS remains to be seen. Uh, however... If and when, hopefully for all you uh, shareholders, if and when the company does beat earnings here in it was about two weeks away, so uh, you know I could see a jump back up to like six, six and a half, even seven here. This fib seven oh five, definitely, definitely doable because I'm sure a lot of people jumped on and shorted the stock. Um, but again, it, it all comes back down to earnings. These earnings numbers are much, much more important than you think. We really don't need to look at any financials. We did that in the last video. Um, as we see here, uh, looking at the daily, you can see the bottom Bollinger Band of 429 and the stock hit 426. Uh, the RSI has been sub 30 on several occasions and now it's sitting here at sub 28 and a half. Um, so we could have a little bit of a pop again back up into the fives. However, I, I really don't know if that 426 was the low of the low. So again, as I said earlier, I could have used 25% of 570 a share. I did 25% of 550 a share, which gave us 412 and a half cents. So that is why, you know, it definitely could uh, rise back up to $5. However, in my opinion, you know, if I was a buyer here, I would actually wait. I would, I would want to see what it does this week, right? If it holds like that four and a half, 460 and kind of flattens out, that might have been the bottom, right? They might have brought it down to 426, bounced it off the bottom. Now they're going to keep it flat at four and a half, 460, and wait for earnings. Or it will continue to ride the bottom Bollinger Band as we've been seeing here for a couple of months, and it will continue to slightly make new lows. And you may see that 412 or 410, maybe even 407, you know, with a quick break and then a pop back up. Uh, however, you know, again, there are many key levels to get back up here if this company does beat earnings. And uh, with the way it, it's run and dropped uh, going into and after earnings report, that's why I'm saying if it's a crazy beat, they could see $7, in my opinion. Uh, random ad. Now we switch over here to weekly. Again, our MACD is continuously sliding. We are just pulling back. And look at the bottom Bollinger Band here on the weekly, 410. And I said 412 and a half. So that's why it could potentially drop down before it does go higher. However, you know, like we always say, if we like it at four, excuse me, if we liked it at five, we're going to love it at 460. And we're going to love it even more at 420 or wherever the hell it goes. So, you know, if you were patient at five and now you're sitting here at, you know, roughly four and a half, might not be the worst time to start piecing your way in. If it does drop down to 410, 412, as, I, as we predicted, then um, obviously you're going to be able to lower your cost basis and increase your position. RSI in the weekly sitting here at a little over 31, the lowest it's been basically in about a year. So it might be ready to take off here, potentially, with uh, a good beat here in Q1 of 23. Again, that was the last beat on the EPS side was Q1 of 22. So, you know, this is definitely something worth keeping an eye on. If you're if you're involved in the stock, I want to wish you the best of luck. If you saw the video and you, you're thinking about getting into the stock, obviously, whatever you do with your assets is entirely your own prerogative. I am just, uh, you know, making the video, throwing out some, some stats, some metrics, giving my opinion here. But, yeah, we did call the... Um, the $200 million uh, issuing of notes to uh, potentially bring down the price of the stock. And uh, in my opinion, we pretty much nailed that call. So, you know, it, again, I currently have no positions in the market, but if I was going to take a position in STEM and I waited at five and then, you know, it was all of a sudden at 440, 430, you know, obviously I would have uh, pat myself on the back and, been able to take a position at a much lower cost. 
However, hey, I mean, you know, if you like the story of the stock, you got in a while ago at nine, ten, twelve dollars a share. Again, don't beat yourself up. If you happen to have some assets, uh, excuse me, some liquidity, you could uh, consider adding to the position to lower your cost basis, right? Dollar cost averaging. However, if you're upset that it pulled back and you're afraid to add more money and now you're just kind of waiting and seeing what's going on again, we looked at the stock. We looked at a lot of the um, uh, programs and incentives on the company's website of all these different states who are giving, you know, these tax breaks and everything to all of these battery and EV companies. So the fact that this company is actually generating revenue and actually doing some business, uh, you know, we may start to see some of these incentives really come in and uh, help propel the business higher. But again, in my opinion, I think we're going to have a clearer picture breaking out of this unclear trumpet here after earnings. But I just wanted to do a quick update. Uh, you know, didn't get it exactly correct. However, I called the pullback. It pulled back. Who's better than your boy, right? No, I'm just kidding. But I'm going to leave it there. So once again, this stocks by the numbers. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop it down in the comments section. If you have any recommendations or if you're unsure about a position you're in and you want to kind of just discuss it a little bit, don't be afraid to drop the uh, symbol down in the comments section. I'll throw it up on the board. And, you know, when, when I have a moment, I'll get to it. I'm, I'm a man of my word. However, moving forward, like I always say, I understand that markets are rocky and they're volatile and they're uncertain. So I want to wish everyone success. I hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. I want everyone to stay focused, stay disciplined, stay positive. Thanks for stopping by. Do me a favor. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I love you guys. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good day.